Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here with my next Star Wars video. This time I'm going to be reviewing Kenobi Episode 2. So just finished watching this and again, another really good episode. Really enjoyed it. Again, it's sort of um, going against my expectations a little bit in that I didn't expect it to make maybe as much progress as it actually did. In that Obi-Wan left the planet to get Leia finds Leia and more or less gets her to safety. I'm not sure if the episode was directly setting up that we're going to go to the planet uh, the guy mentioned and from there uh, like we'll have like the next episode or if we'll just quickly wrap up the idea of Obi-Wan gets Leia back to Alderaan quite quickly and we focus more now in on Obi-Wan dealing with the information that he's just found out. Um, but still we actually accomplished quite a lot. And so the pacing actually seems quite good. And the episode was really, I think, helped by what I thought was like the surprise of the first episode, which was that uh, Leia is in this show and has a much bigger role than I would have ever really expected. It was so fun and enjoyable to see Obi-Wan interact with Leia to, I suppose, establish why she, she later goes on to send out the, the stress signal to him basically is because of events like this she uh, knew him uh, from saving her here and so on so you know really good stuff and so many great little scenes and, and and references but nicely done not needless references but I really like that scene where Leia just sort of takes command a little bit you know like let's get going and Obi-Wan is just like stood there like wow like she's so similar to Padme and basically says as much without of, of course revealing who he was talking about or like the connection to Leia but it's again just interesting to note that you know he's making that connection and in general throughout the episode I, I, I liked a little bit of that dynamic where they were there was definitely elements of it where it felt like it was like kind of how Qui-Gon interacted with Padme in episode one a little bit where uh, he's not really taking some of her nonsense trying to sort of take take over but then he has to kind of have like the connection with her on a more kind of a nice level because you can tell like he's in a kind of stressful situation and but he has to also manage the fact that she's a child and I think they did that quite well. Yes, there's maybe some kind of frustrating kind of kid stuff from her with regards to maybe overreacting when she sees Obi-Wan's face on the kind of bounty hunter hollow thing. And um, that was maybe not super ideal. But you also see the kind of that she's this character sort of at that age where she's on the verge of, um, you know, being someone who like you maybe f can't fully consider a kid just yet because, you know, Obi-Wan is aware like she seems wise beyond her years but then you kind of counter that with scenes of like oh hey you have a lightsaber why don't you use a lightsaber oh you, you're a Jedi you, you make me float and just not connecting with the full sort of situation in play here but you know in in the key moments sort of uh, realizing kind of the truth of the situation and kind of realizing that once he saves her by making her float she kind of trusts him at that at that stage um but yeah you know a, a very focused episode uh, in terms of just like obi-wan very relatively quickly in the episode actually finding leia but obviously it's a trap set by reva and the guards and i was a bit like mm, okay obi-wan gets captured by these thugs but then really quickly gets out of it that was uh that was nice and then uh, we just kind of have a little bit of a like, stealth sequence, a bit of a blaster fight on the roof. Um, we do get introduced to the sort of fake Jedi character, which I actually thought was quite fun. Um, I was worried a little bit at the start that there was this was maybe a little bit too much on the funny haha -ha humor side of things with the way they were going. But I like that they came back and actually gave him a little bit of a more serious character arc in that he went out sort of and it looked like he was just going to join the other bounty hunters but when he saw the the situation i suppose realized that obi-wan is an actual jedi um it connected to the idea that like he is still helping people he's just sort of 
taking advantage of helping people, but he is helping people. So it's, it's, it's a weird one. But he realizes, like, oh, helping a Jedi, that's actually kind of doing kind of what I want to do. Um, and, you know, I was glad that he wasn't killed. Um, I thought that was what was going to happen, but he wasn't. He does get force mind probed, and that's why the, where the final sequence kind of comes from. Um, so that was obviously the great. That's what we, what we were building towards. And in the sense, this explains why they felt they needed to put out the first two episodes on the same day is that I think you needed that Vader connection at the end of the sequence of two episodes. So Riva reveals to Obi-Wan that one Lord Vader is the one that is more or less sent her out to investigate. So that's a reveal to Obi-Wan that Vader is alive because he knows Anakin is Vader because the hollow vid that they watch that sort of confirms he's turned to the dark side is effectively the whole Anakin is anointed as Darth Vader thing. So he knows that that's what Anakin is referred to as. Um, but he obviously hasn't heard about Vader in recent times and this is the confirmation of that. And then she doubles down and actually confirms to him that yes, Anakin Skywalker is alive. Now... This was a scene that made me go like, hmm, do all the Inquisitors know this or is it just her specifically? Because they are setting up the idea that she seems to have ambition beyond what most of the other Inquisitors have. And that potentially she has a maybe like more personal connection with uh, Vader than others do. And that's why she personally feels that she needs to get Obi-Wan because of the connection back to to Anakin so I, I mean I'm interested to know like does that suggest that there is this personal connection or is it just that everyone knows and um, I think it probably is more interesting if it is that like she seems to have a weird dynamic with Vader because that would also kind of uh, maybe attach into like just Vader full stop that he's kind of lost Ahsoka and um, Padme that here's someone he for some reason has sort of latched onto and um, that would make for a bit of an interesting dynamic because my interpretation of the little vader scene at the end and the fact that they show him basically in the healing chamber healing pod thing is that that is them saying that we're going to be a little bit more open with the character of darth vader in this series we'll have moments where he's intimidating but this is a personal thing between anakin and obi-wan because Obi-Wan knows Anakin before the suit you can take away the mystery that you other you otherwise need to portray to most characters because of how personal the dynamic is here and I think that's that's a good sign because I, th I think there is definitely a need for Vader to be characterized as more than just the relentless machine guy in a suit thing you need to really go in on the person in the suit so i'm it makes me very excited that they're definitely building up to the meeting of these two characters given that we know that's effectively the entire premise of this is that they said going in they'll meet again there's going to be another confrontation between the two of them but when it happens when we get there it's going to be fascinating because obi-wan was already a little bit fearful in the the situation that they were in but then you could tell he, he nearly stopped when he found out about this he's already having nightmares i suppose about what's happened feels that he's failed anakin but now to know that anakin is still out there and is sort of like leading the people hunting down all the other jedi it's fascinating to know that like he's being pursued now by anakin and i am so eager to see how he reacts to this and kind of where the series in a way goes from here because again I think most of the trailer shots were from these first two episodes, so I'm not sure how much we know necessarily about scenes that go on sort of like from here. Um, from the trailer, there's maybe like what, one or two shots. I think there's maybe one shot that is maybe meant to be like Obi-Wan and then I guess Vader has just walked into the room and it's maybe just teasing their confrontation, but we don't know what episode that's from. So... Very cool that we, we don't maybe know the full scope of things, but like we are a third of the way through the series. There's only six episodes and the next episode is on Tuesday. I think that it's going to be Tuesdays from here on out in terms of the releases, I believe. So we're going to be halfway through the series in just a couple of days. Um, 
and it, we're, we're going to be making progress through it. So it's not a needlessly long series here. They're going to have to get to the point quite quickly. Um, but I'm, I'm enjoying a lot of what they're doing here. I'm, I do wonder like, okay, is, is Leia going to be in things for like that much longer or not? Like I said at the start, I'm still a little unclear on if they are going to go ahead with sort of like, is more or less the rescue mission done at this point? Or is the next episode going to be Obi-Wan and Leia going to this planet the guy has the transport going to where he says there are people who will help you here and we'll be dealing with whatever that is while we get maybe a little bit of a cool down addressing what the situation is with the Inquisitors because one of the bigger surprises was what they did in the final scene and that is that uh, Riva stabs the Grand Inquisitor straight through with her lightsaber and they they frame the scene as if he's like dead on the ground like he's not like just injured he's mo not moving he's at least unconscious but they can't kill him off because i believe in terms of canonically like it's he he technically in rebels won't die until like five ish years after this so he doesn't die here so unless they're going to do some weird stuff here i'm guessing the inquisitor will get fixed up in some way get like the <laughs> get get the the kind of a bionic gut thing or whatever because again if, if you're highlighting vader and his injuries you assume that you know the technology can also you know be used to to heal the grand inquisitor from this wound um weird decision definitely felt a little bit like drama for the sake of drama because it's very much playing on the idea of wait i know this character doesn't die here but you basically did this what, what's going on here because it feels like she can't really come back from this like if the grand inquisitor survives i guess he is the one who will be aware that she's sort of quote unquote betrayed everyone in this um so i'm not sure what what exactly the situation is there so she'll i guess report back to vader and I, i'm assuming we're going to have that in the next episode that might reveal some of um what's going on it'll pr bring vader into the series properly in terms of his desire to actually find obi-wan if there is a deeper connection between those two and set up i suppose where the series is to go from here because i'm assuming like obviously obi-wan's gonna have to go back to tatooine eventually so we have to find a way that like obi-wan goes back to tatooine and there's then no like suspicion and that until the events of episode four happen the empire doesn't really come to tatooine for any particular reason so i'm i'm, I'm intrigued to see how they do that because it obviously implies that the duel that obi-wan and vader have does not take place on tatooine of course um and that whatever way it happens they'll both escape and maybe not know where each other are necessarily afterwards um but yeah um I, I, I love that the, the episode focused on uh, Leia and Obi-Wan. Um, the actress for Leia is doing like a really, really good job. And again, Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan also of getting that balance of kind of realizing every so often that like, I don't need to be so intense. I need to kind of be a little nicer in this scene. So like he's dismisses, he's dismissive of her when she says her droid was like hurt. But then it's like, okay what happens that gets her to open up a bit and there's that little thing of like he turns the tables on her where like she's aware he's hiding something but then he is aware that like oh there's a little bit of a kind of issue here where the whole you're not a real organa thing still is coming up and she doesn't particularly like to be called princess she just wants to be leia and um, so you know th th there's a bit of character coming out of here even though it's just 10 year old leia um wasn't expecting it but it's it's doing a a really really good job and there's just something very interesting about that obi-wan was there at her birth and here he is properly was interacting with her for the first time um the the scene where he actually does use the force to save her is interesting because i i'm guessing it was it, it was meant to be viewed as effectively that that's maybe the first time in years he's 
properly used the force like that and you could tell that it was a bit of a struggle to make it happen and that it took a lot out of him in a way but that this is going to be needed coming up I guess um the blaster fight again was one of those ones where like they have to have all the characters miss I think he eventually takes out one of the bounty hunters but that's not really what it's about it's just to have some action on the rooftops they had some Riva parkour stuff that maybe went on a little long in that it made it feel like, you know, almost that she's really slow making her way through. I get it's a big city and she saw it from kind of far away, but I didn't quite get the intensity of like, she's going to show up any minute now because there were just these almost isolated scenes of her doing parkour. Um, uh, oh, nearly forgot. The scene with the veteran clone trooper was great um again the 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 subtlety of this and that they they let you interpret this rather than just telling you the way you're meant to feel in that obi-wan looks at him and is like but he, he gives him the money so it's this combination of both i guess shock from potentially the last time he's seen clone troopers being them like him fighting them in, in the events of episode three them turning on him because of order 66 but then He's aware that, I suppose, to some degree, a switch was flicked within them and it was Palpatine's doing. Um, and that he actually fundamentally had a good relationship with the clones and that the clones are kind of just pawns in this. So seeing a clone here on the streets just kind of discarded, um, like the double aging thing. So that clone kind of looked old, older than Obi-Wan was, even though uh, the clones probably only like you know like 20 years old or something like that like it's 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 a really interesting scene that just kind of highlighted like those two dynamics of like a little bit of shock seeing someone he he last thought of as his enemy but then more of the the actual connection of like he actually had a good relationship with the clones coming out as well and i'm wondering will they do anything more with that going forward in the sense that I think everyone's always latched onto the idea of like, will we ever get Obi Wan and Cody meeting again? But who knows? But still, it was a it was a nice use, subtle, but it also made sense, and and I thought that was really really strong. So um, I think that's all I want to say about this one. It was a very focused episode, uh, very much on the Leia Obi Wan stuff, which was good. Um, Reva, I think, actually continues to be a, a an interesting character in that. I really want to know what the dynamic is. And I hope there is a dynamic, because may maybe in reflection, if there isn't much going on with her, it might make her the focus on her feel a little bit not great. But I've, I have a feeling they're building to something. The, the only other thing I want to mention before I end this is just um, the Grand Inquisitor said that like uh, she is the least of them and that she joined them like from the gutter. So I guess sort of implying that she's not a jedi potentially she doesn't have she's not one of the inquisitors who has like a jedi background which is quite interesting to me because again in the in my first episode review i was connecting like that uh, order 66 scene at the start to oh was that reva in that and that's what they're going for or is he just like insulting her because she's like one of the younger inquisitors or something like that and that he doesn't like how ambitious she is or whatever. Because there seems to be a little bit of a tension between the two of them. So I'm not really sure was that meant to be anything particularly revealing. That like, oh, literally you were found and like part joined into the Inquisitor program. Whereas everyone else already had like force training because they were former Jedis. I, I don't really know what necessarily that is about. Um, but yeah. Just a um, little bit of weirdness about the whole Grand Inquisitor thing in that is that just there to give Reva maybe a shocking moment when he turns up again? Or have they actually done something very weird here? I, I don't actually know. But in the comments, let me know what your thoughts were on episode two of Kenobi. Where do you think things are going from here? What were your thoughts on how this one went? But that's been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.